G'day everybody, where's Wally here? Well, if you think I'm sounding different, I'm trying out an MV51 microphone today. So let me know in comments if you think I sound better or worse. I was looking at the ISS and it's, well, not new camera, but a replacement camera for the downward pointing camera. Now this one, they're using a Nikon D4 with, yes, then that is a Nikon D4 gleam, not a um, jolly GoPro you know, the two by converter, and they have full functionality of the zoom and also the auto exposure, but we'll get to that in a minute. First of all, what we're seeing here playing right now is a nice little thing I captured off the stream the other day, and it was passing over some irrigation in Africa and then in Iraq, and I thought that was particularly cool. Then I was going to show you this real cool nighttime pass over Kansas City. And I was going to show you how I went about matching it up just to prove it to myself that it was Kansas City. But just now I was listening to Brandon's show and all the um, pinata of excuses going on there. And they were talking about the ISS and I heard this guy confirming that for the last 24 hours or so there's not been a cloud in the sky. It is so nice here, down here. I'm not too far from there, a few hours, but uh, it is so nice. There ain't a cloud in the sky. Yeah. It's the clearest, be most beautiful weather. I just got done working. The current water temperature at Lake Pontchartrain is 53 degrees. Damn. Oh, that's Celsius. No, it's in Fahrenheit. And the air temperature is 61. There's your uh, temperature inversion. So I went and had a quick look at Julian Danz's excellent website, and he had a nice recording taken straight from the feed from the ISS and it was showing the ISS passing from New Orleans. Well if that's New Orleans down there then that dark patch must be Lake Pontchartrain. How cool is that? Oh Gleam, that's not a boat in the middle of Lake Pontchartrain. I think you'll find that's a hot pixel. You know what they are don't you? Over Atlanta eventually got to New York City which is that little patch down under the clouds there and that was before the exposure got beaten because the sun but just look how fast those dull city lights fade away to almost nothing as soon as the ISS pops into the morning sunlight that was a brilliant bit of proof showing that the ISS camera is now doing a lot of auto exposure so it is able to pick up these dark cities at night if there's no clouds and it is also able to adjust for the bright daylight. But when it's hitting that little piece of um, ISS and there's nothing underneath it, well, it's kind of get really hard to see anything. So I thought this was really great. And Brandon, just as you suggested here. There you go. I'd like to see an ISS Passover right now. We're in Florida, the state of Florida, in a cloud in the sky. There ain't, a, uh, I mean, it's just, there ain't even a spot of, of cotton up there. It's totally clear as far as the eye can see, driving up 95 north. And uh, I bet when the ISS goes by, they just show a big cloud-infested Florida, as usual. Yeah, yeah, right. Compare it. Oh, and Brandon, you could even do a daily housekeeping session. Every time you come onto your stream, go and check the ISS live feed and see how it matches up with reality. You guys just might be surprised. Just have a pop in, see where the ISS is pointing at the moment. And if it's going over somewhere near somebody, you should get them to pop outside and check. Because I think you guys really need to be able to validate that the ISS is showing real time stuff on its down pointing camera. And that would give you guys a whole lot of things to chew over, I am sure. 
All you got to do is prove that the ISS is actually showing real stuff. And I know it's pretty much game over for Flat Earth, but you'd be doing some actual science. So how about it, guys? There you go. I'd like to see an ISS Passover right now. We're in Florida, the state of Florida, in a cloud in the sky. And uh, I bet the ISS goes by to show a big cloud-infested Florida, as usual. So, Brandon, who was it who said whenever they look at the ISS passing over Florida, it's always cloudy? You know, I think they really need to do a bit more research because, oh, what's that I'm showing there now? Could that be Florida? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't really think I'm seeing very many clouds there, are you? Interesting. So one fun thing that I noticed now that they're using a Nikon D4 with a teleconverter and the zoom lens has a motor on it so that they can actually zoom in and zoom out. And if you look at this image here, I did actually do a rough calculation and worked out the zoom was around 150 millimeters. But that was giving about a 10 second sweep time for the ISS to cross any particular piece of um, terrain. But at the moment, it's running around 60 millimeter, which gives around a 30 to 36 second sweep time to cross the terrain, which is a little bit slower, which you would expect. Now, the fun thing is, Brandon, whoever it is on your channel who often says that the ISS would have to be thousands of kilometers higher, 10 times higher, because it doesn't line up with Google Earth, well, it seems like he always forgets to allow for the fact that the camera can have a zoom level that's different, changing. It's not necessarily always the same as what the Google Earth algorithm might try to use. So he's really got no idea, has he? I guess flat is just... What is it you say, critical think? Remind me again. A flat earther could never have invented this, because a flat earther doesn't understand optics. Fuck off, you prick. What a... Oh. <laughs> So there you have it, Brandon. Here's the challenge. Now make sure you get the right website when you're looking for the live feed. It's the EOL something. I look, I'll leave the link in the description as always. And I really would like to see you guys try this. You can always get someone to pop in and have a look, or even better still, if you can't find someone in the local area because you don't have many friends, how about a webcam? They'll always talk to you. There's plenty of live streaming webcams around the world that you can double check with. I look forward to seeing what you're doing, and at the end I've left you a special little screen grab from the Himawari 8. I've gotten in the habit of always checking the Himawari 8 when I see there's going to be an ISS pass over Australia, because it's always exactly right as far as the cloud cover goes. So how about that? How do they know? Okay guys, I'll leave it with you. Now enjoy the rest of this pass of the ISS over Australia, and it ends up at the Gold Coast in southeast Queensland, which is kind of special.